Hey guys, it's Tyler with TCG Rewind. Today, we gotta talk about the beautiful diversity of Tengu plant format, man. This is far and away the most diverse format Yu-Gi-Oh! has ever seen. If you don't think that, you are coping because we gotta talk about these recent tournaments that happened over this past weekend. Um, one of them was Tengu Rumble, and that was a tournament that I actually participated in. That's the one where you have 72 hours to play out your matches. That's for those people who maybe are too busy to show up to a single day and play out a whole tournament. This kind of lets you schedule your, your matches throughout the week, and it's really cool. Um, and I participated in that. So you can see a video of me playing through that. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. But um, yeah, we have Tengu Rumble here, and then we had Tengu Plant Takeover, which is like the monthly tournament we have in our Discord. So if you guys want to participate in any of these, I'll definitely put a link in the description uh, to that discord so you can join and come play um, but we're gonna kind of look at the metagame breakdown and we'll go over the top four of each of these tournaments given the spread it's like really crazy and surprising to see what actually topped um, so we'll first look at Tengu Rumble this was the you know like 72 hour to play tournament but we have two Tengu plants two chaos piper one pipe or two chaos one piper and one chaos end uh, two Malefic, one Frog Monarch, one Car Curry, one Infernity, one Archfiend, one Watt, one Gladiator Beast, one Owner's Seal, one Psychic, one Gadget, one Agent. So, really diverse spread of decks, you know, there, there's kind of something for everyone out there, which is, uh, pretty fun. Um, but like I said, the top four was definitely gonna surprise you, so we're gonna kind of hop over, we'll take a look. So starting off, we have Halfar, and he was playing Frog Monarchs, and I've always kind of criticized Frog Monarchs for not doing that great. Like, I, I feel like it's like kind of an inconsistent deck. Um, but one thing I really liked is how far took it to this tournament and then also played it in Tengu Rumble. So he was like, went on and tried to improve the list. And you kind of can see those improvements from this event to that one because he actually topped both, which is crazy. So uh, not to spoil anything, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into this first list and we'll, we'll kind of talk about some of the flaws. And then I really like a lot of the changes he made going into the second one, but he ended up getting fourth place with this list. So, um, basically, it's a pretty standard list. I, he's going for three Light and Darkness Dragon, and I kind of like this because, like, unlike an Edison, like, it's actually pretty hard to turn off a Light and Darkness Dragon in this format. So, I think it's, like, a lot stronger of a card, right? The only gripe I have with it is there's really nothing valuable to resummon back from the graveyard with its secondary effect. Like... There, you only have like Ryzer or Caius, I guess, is like the best options. But overall, this is still a really powerful control card. And if your opponent doesn't have an out, they don't have an out. And it can feel really bad to minus to this. Um, opted for three duality. I also noticed there was no foolish burial, which I thought was kind of crazy. Like, I, I'm not sure why. Like, I, and playing against Halfar, I, I know that, you know, they, they struggled to see their frog package. So... I think maybe adding a Foolish could help with that consistency, but when you're running Triple Duality, you're really kind of hoping to, like, get that engine of, like, hey, I want to see my frogs, and then I want to see the, you know, only Monarchs from that point on. Uh, but, yeah, in the, looking into the side deck, you know, we, we got Jinzo. Uh, I guess also, I, I don't see a point in running Mobius. I think you're just going to get blown out by Starlight Road, or the card is almost always going to be chainable. Like, it's always going to be a warning or something like that. Um, or Torrential, but if you run Jinzo, I feel like you have a better shot at like just turning off what your opponent's trying to do. I, I like Jinzo main better than this if you're gonna try to opt to like have some form of spell trap control. Um, but yeah, um, Spiritual Water Hour, I, I don't know why they opted to run that. I think this card's terrible. Like, I mean, I understand like the idea, it's like seems really appealing to like tribute a water and like look at your opponent's hand, you're like, oh, I can like tribute Treeborn Frog. The issue is, is every turn you're wanting to tribute that Treeborn Frog anyway. So this is only good if you actually have no other play. And if that's the case, then like you're kind of already losing. So I feel like you're just flooding your hands with more bricks. It's like a worse Monarch to have in your hand, right? Because you have to set it and wait. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I I'm personally not a fan of this card. Um, and it definitely looks like they opted to remove it going into the next tournament. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty standard list and nothing too fancy. I, I do think the the three duality is a ballsy move i think it's like hard to run this card because it means you can't bring back treeborn frog and that means your engine's not really flowing so yeah we'll, we'll kind of go back to this list later to a degree because we're gonna see how far updated list going into the next tournament either way he got fourth place with this um which is really great i mean super impressive because i think this is a hard deck to top with um so going into third place we had blaze phoenix with tengu plants and this is a really interesting list like he, he opted for a light sworn package and i'm gonna be honest i think milling with tengu in deck 
is really bad. Like, I, I just personally am not a fan of running mill cards when you also run Tengu, because if you mill your Tengus, then you just kind of turn off your Tengu's ability to float, and I, I just think that's, like, almost too risky. Like, the, the trade-off is you can potentially mill, like, a Dandy, Swore, Glow Up, which can be really strong, but it's like, you're looking to mill three cards, and, you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess Raikou is kind of nice spot removal, and it's only, like, th adding three cards into the deck, but... Um, I don't know. I can't personally say I'm a fan. I guess Card Trooper is a fourth miller. Um, but yeah, and then also, <laughs> I think it's really bizarre that they opted to not run Enemy Controller. I think Enemy Controller is like one of, if not the best cards in Tengu Plants. And if you're running Scapego, I feel like you should definitely be running any Enemy Controller. That's just my take. Um, the Chaos Sork is really interesting. Like, I guess adding in the extra lights in the mill package means you can kind of justify the Chaos Sork. So, that in itself is pretty strong. I mean, Chaos Sork is still a crazy powerful card. So, you know, that can be a bit of a struggle. But, yeah. Um, other than that, they had, like, Puppet Plant in the side deck, which is pretty cool. And I was kind of confused why they went for one Cyber Dragon, one Chimera Tech, and then System Down. I feel like this should just be another Cyber Dragon or it should be like one or the other you know what i'm saying like maybe just use system down if you don't want to run cyber dragon I, I just feel like doing this mixture doesn't make a lot of sense um but yeah i mean overall the list performed really well kick the shit out of me if you saw me play against it um so i i can't really talk too much but i like i said i i personally don't really understand the concept of milling like i, I guess like like i said it can set up the chaos and can maybe set up the plant tuners but i just think it come it's like Kind of risky and i also i'm not a really fan of not running enemy controller when you're running things like scapegoat and stuff like that so um but yeah that's the tengu plant list pretty pretty standard just a few main like minor tech changes like honestly the spell trap lineup is pretty relatively the same that you would usually see um going into this banger of a second place list my god this was my list <laughs> if you saw my car curry video like i said um, I played through this uh, the whole tournament with this deck, so I and I put all the replays up, so you guys can watch me play this deck throughout the entire tournament. I think I only had like one major misplay, maybe two, um, in that tournament, so I, I think I piloted it pretty well. Uh, the only issue I have with my list is like I feel like maybe my body wasn't worth it. I, you know, I, I kind of struggled with this card, and I and I also was thinking like Cyber Dragons. I feel like they're really good going second, and I like them as an out to Thunder King. I really wanted a lot of outs to Thunder King um, because I didn't want to just get shut down like I did in the finals. But um, one thing I noticed is, and I noticed especially after going back and watching the replays, is there's a lot of times where I just have Cyber Dragon clogged in my hand because there's kind of counter synergy between Cyber Dragon and Nisamu, right? Because you're always going to have a monster on field. And this is like, you want to always have a monster on field so you can set up like, you know, bigger plays or bigger combos, but that means the Cyber Dragon feels kind of dead. So, I don't know, maybe, I was thinking maybe cut this down to one, maybe add another instant fusion or even, um, I don't know, I honestly thought about use it going down to one Cyber Dragon, three Gen X Neutron. Um, just because of that, but the only issue is, is again, you're sacrificing an out to Thunder King, so going second immediately, it feels kind of bad, and like, it's not like Cyber Dragon's a terrible card, there's obviously the drawback of if your opponent monster reborns it, it's a little awkward, but overall, I, I was really, really happy with how this list performed, the, the only other thing I can say about my body too is, when you run it, the nice thing about it is it kind of lets you play with no fear, right, like outside of exactly warning, if, or judgment if your opponent has back row and you think it could be torrential or mirror force you can just play recklessly and that can just win you the game sometimes even if they don't have it it's like i can it like gives you the security to play um which is why i like it as a little one of i saw this card a lot i don't think i resolved it once so um it's kind of tough to say but i do really like the ratios of these cards i low-key was considering cutting strategist but i like there's just some moments where you need it, and it's it's like the most awkward card in the deck, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, I really love this list. I would definitely take it again. I actually was like hoping to maybe get squeeze in a side event while I was at YCS Vegas, and I brought this exact list. I was just gonna run it because it felt really really good to play in tournament. It was testing really well for me in like all my matches that I was playing outside of the tournament with it. Um, I love triple smashing. I don't think I would change that. 
This card came up so useful, and if it doesn't, if it isn't useful, then you just make a land ice, and now this is an effect negator that can like deal with gores or drag or whatever else your opponent's trying to do. So, um, yeah, I love this list, but yeah, the, the this was a lot of fun. I would highly recommend trying to play something similar to this if you want to give car curries a go. Also, we got to talk about Chaos Trap Hole. This card was incredible in the side deck. Um, being able to interrupt your opponent's Cyber Dragon plays when they side in, um, this kind of gives you the safety because sometimes you have a Synchro play turn one, and you're like, well, I don't want to put like a Beret and an Asami on field because the Cyber Dragon just outs it. But you can kind of get some security where they need like exactly like heavy or MST plus a Cyber Dragon to deal with it. So you can side in the Chaos Trap Holes and it kind of it, it makes you feel a bit better or safer doing those plays, um, which is really strong because if they don't have the Cyber Dragon, you can just blow them out, right? So um, and it's also just super useful against a lot of decks. But yeah, this was my build. Definitely pretty happy with how it performed. Would 100% run it back in another tournament. I absolutely loved it. Um, and yeah, so we'll go into the finals. And this was... <laughs> so Richard won with Archfiends. And my God, like how crazy is that? Like I, I swear, like I said, anyone who doesn't believe Tengu Plant format isn't the most diverse format in Yu-Gi-Oh's history is just coping. Because the fact that someone can throw together a list of Archfiends and play it in an entire tournament where there was meta represented and then win the entire thing that just proves to me that any good player can win doing what they like playing something they're passionate about right like you can find an optimized build you can make something work um which is why this format is just far and away the best format in my opinion anything goes um and you know we saw that you, you guys can see me play out my match against Rip richard i played two matches against him and we'll take a look at the list taroking archfiend the more i thought about it the more i just think this card sucks <laughs> if i'm being honest like I don't know if this ever came up useful for him, but I just feel like it just should be another Archfiend Soldier. Just the 1900 normal summon with no effect is arguably better if you're trying to go with this falling down strategy. If you guys don't know what falling down does, it, if you have an Archfiend, you can take control of your opponent's monster. And what's cool is that includes things like Thought Ruler or even Scrap Archfiend in the extra deck. And so you can even go as far as going Tour Guide into Desrook and that will let you steal your opponent's monster then you can like make a rank three or something if you want to the only downside to this card is if that archfiend monster leaves the field this card dies and you you give their monster back but you can do a ton of damage off of just stealing some opponent's monster this is why i think brain control is like a really broken card um because if you don't have limits to what you can do with a monster you're stealing it just opens up so much and like i mean you literally saw me losing the finals to him just slamming a falling down on my utopia and just attacking for 4k it was just over right so um yeah it it's a pretty crazy card um interesting strategy and I, you know, obviously I like just going for the chaos approach. The fact that Desrook is a light, tour guide into Desrook is a light in the dark. So having, you, you just instantly have a chaos orc or a BLS summon, which is really, really nuts. Um, and then the only thing, my only gripe is, you know, after seeing Hidden Armory, I've never used this card, but he was talking about how like after you summon it, you after you activate it, you can't normal summon the turn you activate it. I think that's just kind of bad. You know, I, I personally wouldn't use a card like this. I think it has, like, I think you're going to see falling downs, realistically. I think you will see them. You're running it as a three of, and this deck can kind of function without seeing it. So, um, I, I feel like this is a little bit overkill. Um, and then also, I really like Dark Highlander. This is really, really cool. I don't know what Fiend Tuner he's, he'd be using to summon it, but, like, I don't honestly have no idea how this gets summoned, but this card is so sick. Either player can synchro summon, so you just turn off your opponent's special summons, basically. Um, but, yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, I can't say it's a standard list, because this is a very unique build, very unique deck. Um, so, congrats to Richard for winning with it. You know, he, he literally said on my stream that, you know, he's like, he like jokingly said, find a winning Archfiend list. And I was like, hey, it's possible. And I truly believe that because, like I said, anything's possible in this format. And he proved it. So, that was Tengu Plant or Tengu Rumble. Um, we're going to now look at Tengu Plant Takeover. So, we'll go to the meta breakdown of that. I was unable to participate or stream this event, which is kind of sad, but we had quite the pool of, um, diversity right so we had two scraps two chaos two worms one gravekeeper and then one nordic gravekeeper which we'll get to that in a second uh two frogs 
one monarch uh and then one like junk doppel frogs we had tengu plant one gadget one tg one malefic one jurak and then one like well zombies or probably psychic zombies realistically um and so yeah we'll get into the top four breakdown so jumping right into it worms actually topped this event which is super super cool I, like i'm really happy to see worms get some representation because i think this deck is really good um not a lot of people opt to play it but you know it it can definitely put up its dukes, right? I, I like, you know, the, the gamble of running one Worm King, although if I played this deck, this would be in my opening hand every single game. Um, and then just pretty optimized, going for the triple upstart, not opting for MST because you got offerings to the Snake Deity, so you don't really need to worry about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, pretty solid list. One thing I will say is I personally, in, in my experience of playing, Worms. I really liked having Morphing Jar, especially with Dark World not in the format, because if you open a hand of like a cloggy hand of like Yagons and stuff like that, you could potentially just Morphing Jar set and like, you know, draw a bunch of cards. Or like you set a Morphing Jar set five, your opponent he just summons a monster, swings into it. There's a lot of ways you can kind of plus off that card in Worms, which is why I, I personally like it as a tech card. Um, I noticed there's a super poly inside, which I think is to fuse the, for the worm zero. I honestly don't understand what the interaction of this was for. And I, I would love, um, for whoever topped with it. Hold on. Let me, let me find out, get the name, uh, for Kirk to, you know, if you're watching this video, go over in the comments, explain why you opted for this. Um, because I, especially like, I think if you're going to opt for running super poly, I would like to see at least side or at least main a copy of elemental hero the shining i think you absolutely have the extra deck space for it in this deck and like if you go against heroes and could just fuse with their entire board the super poly side is really nuts especially because you run only light monsters so you can make the shining with just one hero on the field and they can't change gemini sparks or anything to it so i think that'd be a really relevant addition to the deck um heroes are a very strong contender in this format so you know i, I think it's worth it if you're gonna side this i don't like i said i'm not really entirely sure what this would be for is i guess if you like summon zex and get a get a yag into the field you can summon this and bring back another monster in defense <laughs> I, I really don't know <laughs> so yeah i don't know definitely something worth explaining I'd, I'd love to know what it is um but yeah I, I i definitely really like this list seems really smooth seems really consistent i like the triple upstart kind of cutting down on some of the less important cards to just you know try to draw as consistently as possible although this is kind of spooky if you haven't resolved w nebula meteorite because if you draw into the worm king it can kind of feel bad like this is your garnet um but it's like a necessary garnet but yeah guys um we'll go into third place which was scraps this was blab and honestly kudos to them you know <laughs> i feel like like i said i i never see scraps perform well and so for it to get a top four uh, i think is really hype all but i have to take a moment and just flame how horribly they sorted the deck i i had to recreate this deck in the sword and i didn't even change like i was gonna sort it for you guys but then I was like, no, you guys need to see what I went through. I had to build, this is exactly how he submitted his deck list. Like, bro, just hit, hit the sort button. Please, for the love of God, hit the sort button. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is the, the list. We were running 13 monsters and kind of just going for a real streamlined version of the deck. You know, basically cutting down like the third horn, the third fiendish chain and stuff like that. Uh, to try and even like cutting the maxi entirely I, I think that's like what the YCS list had just to add the three upstart I think it just makes things a bit more consistent and also triple scrap yard to try to guarantee you see scrappies This get like basically you're effectively running 16 monsters, which I think is like a fine ratio um, And a pretty good trap lineup I like the ad extra edition of Kalma haunted because it's just going to be the most like one of the most useful cards um going into the side deck i mean it all seems pretty standard i like the goes and i'm not sure what you're citing shadow and prisoning mirror for i guess if you're worried about grave keepers but even then at that point i think you can maybe just do like a close forest or something like that i, I guess maybe this hurts grave keepers a bit more um but yeah really standard standard list all around just a you know an upstart splash you know going with the upstart hope and list strategy um Two Thunder King is interesting. I'm not sure why they opted to cut this down because you could technically cut 
do two, Scrapyard three, Thunder King. Um, I'm not sure what the reason for this is. I'm also kind of low-key not a huge fan of Scrap Storm. I think this card could be cut down a bit because like you have to summon this with the or like you have to use this with the expectation like the value you're gonna get is if they like bottomless or deprison a scrap beast. And then there's like some value to it, but it's like what are you swinging over a scrap beast? You know, it's at 1600, like I guess with horn, but then you're killing your own horn. I don't know. It just, to me, it doesn't make a ton of sense. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think it's like crazy good. It obviously gets you scrap chimera, which sets you up for a nice play the next turn, but yeah, is what it is. I just don't think three of this is really necessary in the deck. I also really would like to see King Tiger Wangu be used in scraps because I think that card is Omega broken in this format. It like walls off almost all of the meta decks. Um, so yeah, anyway, we'll go to second place and this is how far again with his frog monarchs and we can see the updates in the list We cut the spiritual water art, which is fantastic. I, I love that call But one really interesting thing I noticed is you know, they wanted more consistency Obviously, I, we saw the struggle against me in the tournament um, with like just kind of bricking So they opted for the upstarts, which is cool, but then I noticed there is no Ronin Toten in extra which means the only way to make like Gachi, for example, is to like summon a swap and then like reborn a swap or something. So that was kind of confusing to me. I'm not sure what the what the reason for cutting Ronin is. I think Ronin is definitely worth it as the one of maybe in theory you can kind of brick on it, but it's a 2K booty um, and obviously offers plays when Treeborn cannot. Uh, and then there's also a random Levier that was swapped out for the second Gachi, which I'm not really sure why, because I do not see a way to actually use it. There's no level threes in main or side. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what that, <laughs> what that is about. Um, but yeah, there, there's also a treacherous trap hole inside. I just, I always question this. If you're not going to main it, why side it? You know, like... What are you putting this in against? I guess if you're against a deck that doesn't have a lot of floaters, maybe it's vi viable, but overall, I do definitely like this list a lot better. Um, cutting Battle Fader down feels good. Seems like it like reduces clogging. We're again, still not running Foolish Burial. So maybe with this version with like Triple Upstart, it was easier to see the Treeborn and maybe it kind of justify not running Foolish because the only thing to Foolish really is Treeborn. And if you aren't running Ronin, then there's no reason to run that either. It's like kind of just a minus one if you already see your frog package. So there's a lot of tools to get to the frog package. Um, and yeah, overall, I definitely like it. They also cut the Mobius out of the main and then just sided the Jinzo. Great choice, I think. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this deck. I, I think it's pretty sick. This is another deck that I kind of low-key think you could side Super Poly in and like main deck of Elemental Hero Fusion because of the fact that like... Like you could literally main deck Absolute Zero and The Shining in here and then super poly your opponent's board. And I think it'd be really cool. But anyway, uh, we'll go into finals. So <laughs> once again, we have Himne winning another tournament. And this is a really weird list because this is Gravekeeper Nordic that won this tournament. So again, guys, how are we not just acknowledging this is just absurdly the most diverse format ever like we have gravekeeper nordic and archfiends win the last two tournaments my mind is blown but we have i, I don't know what to, what you'd want to call it really like I, i'm not even sure what the real synergy is i guess technically if your opponent chooses to leave the gravekeeper monsters on the field you can like use descendant to start popping stuff and it's kind of annoying one thing I do like is this idea of utilizing the Gravekeeper package outside of just a control deck. So I was kind of thinking about this myself. Like realistically, Recruiter is just a, a Sangin that's going to search you another Recruiter, right? It, it's kind of like an x Saber Dark Soul, but you can kind of run it and it, it's like a splashable Dark Soul to a degree because like you're just going to search another Recruiter and that's fine. Like that's totally acceptable. So I do kind of like that idea. It's really cool. Like if, if they leave this on the field, um, you can just normal the horse and you can even go as far as making ancient sacred wyvern they even opted to run like necro valley and close forest in the event that it's really good against your opponent's deck you can just go into ancient fairy dragon one way or another whether it's off of the gray goat or just off of summoning this with a recruiter and then you can just pop their like their field spell and either get like a necro valley or get a close forest so i think that that's pretty cool Side deck looks a lot cleaner than most Himne side decks I see. <laughs> it's not as 
wonky or wild. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm a fan of like the one of leeching. I don't know, but um, yeah, I, I, I'd like to see, I, I'm sad I didn't get to see this deck in motion because I'm confused to a degree as like, what was the point? Like why Gravekeeper, Gravekeeper Nordics? Like what, what this engine does? Um, like obviously there's plays to make if they don't attack, like flip summon spy, get recruiter, normal horse. Um, you can even like get a like two card Trish if you like flip this into another spy, get like summon Valor, and that also gives you light in the dark. So it has a really nice chaos synergy here, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I'd love to see this deck in motion because I'm not, I can't really like speak on it a whole lot because I don't really know what it did. I, I didn't get to watch it. Um, but shout out to Himne, always always being a top player in our Discord, always popping off in these tournaments with his weird spicy lists. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it, guys. That's going to wrap it up for all these decks. Like I said, you know, if you guys want to participate, join the link in the description. Come play in these tournaments. This format is incredible if you haven't played it before. Like, so incredibly diverse. L just looking at all these decks seeing like you know you know the historical meta tengu plants agents were always on top and like tgs and you know those decks are still seeing some representation in these tournaments and then they're you know getting outshined by weird innovative stuff and that just kind of shows just how flexible this format really is and you know i i really just think it speaks lengths to what you are capable of if you decide to invest your time in this format so yeah that's gonna wrap it up for this video guys thank you so much for watching make sure you guys like comment subscribe and have a great time doing today